Hello everyone, thank you for taking a few moments to view this video on pre-experimental research designs. Now as we go through this content, what I'd like to share with you is that we're looking at the very first stage or the foundation for what experimental designs look like. Now the first thing that's going to be important for us to look at here is the fact that when we do experiments, we usually identify what's taking place within the experiment through the use of letters. R, O, T, and C. So hopefully that is kind of easy to remember, especially if you were ever in an ROTC program. Now, for research purposes, the R, O, T, and C stand for something in particular. Uh, the R here stands for randomization. The O here stands for observation. The T stands for treatment. And the C stands for constant. So again, these are the letters that we're going to use and see throughout all of the videos that we'll look at that talk about experimental research design. So let's get into a quick scenario here to help us understand what's taking place. Now, the first type of study that we'll look at is what we call the one-shot case study. Now, if you've seen the other videos, you'll remember that we've previewed this, but again, we're going to have an opportunity to walk through this together uh, to understand what's taking place. Now, in this one-shot case study, here's what we have happening. We have two things, and we're going to identify it by these letters. We have the letters T, and we have the letter O. So just to make sure we're clear on this, the T here represents the treatment. And of course, the O here represents the observation. Now, we've also talked about the fact that our T, being the treatment, also represents what we call the independent variable. And of course, we talked about the fact that our O represents the dependent variable. Now, let's do something here. Let's go to the scenario that we have here to identify what's taking place. So here's the scenario. Dr. A wants to see how much students learn from taking research methods. He decides to teach the class and then evaluate how students do only by giving one final exam after having taught the course. So if we identify what the independent variable is and the dependent variable is, I think we can do that fairly easily. So our independent variable or the treatment in this situation would be the research methods course. And then of course the dependent variable would be the final exam. So we'll record that here just so that we keep track of what's taking place. And then again, our dependent variable, the final exam. Now, there's a question that we should begin to ask ourselves here just to make sure that we really understand what's taking place. So, here it is. This study, while maybe seemingly unfair, does give us an opportunity to see does the treatment lead to a specific outcome or to a specific observation? But there are a few challenges with this type of study. Um, you'll remember that we talked about a concept called extraneous variables. And we use the letters EV here to represent that. Um, extraneous variables are a form of independent variables that can affect the outcome of the study. So if we think about this, there are several things that might impact uh, the outcome of this study. So think about this practically. Um, the amount of studying someone does 
for an exam might impact how well they perform. So we'll put here as one possible extraneous variable is the number of hours studying. So of course we would think that if you spend more time studying you'll probably get a better grade. Uh, another extraneous variable could be due to the fact that maybe someone's actually taken that class before. So we'll say previously attempted course. And if we wanted to, we really could go on and on about the types of extraneous variables that impact this study. So let's take a look at the next study design. This next one is what we call the one group pretest post test study. And so what I'd like to do here is to again start by identifying the letters that make up our experimental notation and then we'll talk about each of these here in just a moment. So the letters that we'll have here are the letters O, we'll have a T, and then we'll have another O here. So just as you're probably thinking, the first O of course represents the observation. The second letter that we have here, our T, of course, represents the treatment. And then, of course, our second O represents another observation. And again, just remember that the numbers here just simply identify the number of the observation. So, something that I think is going to be helpful for us to um, wrestle with here for just a moment is identifying where the independent variable is and where the dependent variable is. Now this probably makes sense if we were to cover up this first O, our first observation, we'd essentially be left with our T and an O, which would be our one-shot case study. So let's start there. Our T is going to be the same, it's going to be the independent variable. <clears throat> And our second O, the observation, will also be the dependent variable, just like it was before. So you may be wondering, well, what do we label this first observation as? And that's a great question. And the truth of the matter is that we're not going to necessarily label it as anything. So think about this for just a moment. The purpose of an experiment is to again see if there is a cause and an effect of something. And so the cause in this particular scenario that we'll look at is going to be represented by the treatment. And the observation will again represent the effect. Now this first O or our first observation just simply represents the observation before we introduce or implement the treatment. So let's go to the scenario here for just a second to see if we can unpack what's taking place. So our first observation, as you may have already guessed, is the pre-assessment. So we typically kind of think of, about this as like a pre-test in a course. And then of course our treatment will be what it was earlier. It is going to be the research methods course. Then of course our second observation will represent the final exam. So let's talk about this for just a second. The question that I want to pose is what makes this design better than the first one? So a couple of things that I want us to jot down here. Uh, this design gives us something better or a little bit different. It gives us the pretest. And so, in other words, what this does is it gives us an opportunity to see perhaps what students may have known prior to taking the course. And so, at least this way, we get a sense of maybe what they knew prior to 
and what they've gained after having been taught. Now, there are a couple of things about this that really still don't make this as great of a study as it could be. Now, here's the second thing that I want us to make note of. Um, there are possible outside influences that could impact this study. And so we've talked about this before as extraneous variables. So again, just as we noted from the first example, there are other things that could impact the actual observation or the outcome of this study. So just like we said before, the number of hours studying and whether or not someone has taken this course already. Those things could still impact the outcome. So what we're saying is that while this study is better, there is still a chance for these extraneous variables to impact our final result. Now, the next thing is that these results could actually change depending on the group characteristics. So we'll make a note of this first. So what we're saying here is that we could take, let's say, a very well-learned class and give them the same treatment. And we could do the same with maybe a class that isn't as much of a high achieving class. And our results could just be completely different. And so what that means is that um, our study wouldn't be as reliable as we want it to because the results can change depending on the characteristics of the group. So this is one thing that doesn't make this as great of a study, but at least it's better than what we looked at previously. So let's look at one more example here. The next study that we have is something that we call the static group comparison. Now the static group comparison does something a little bit different than we've looked at for the past two examples. Uh, this example or this type of study provides us with an opportunity to look at two different groups. So just as we did before, we'll identify the experimental notation and then we'll talk about it together. So if you'll write with me, let's do this. We'll put our T for our treatment here and then we'll have our observation. And now what we're going to do is draw a dotted line here. But then underneath that, we're going to put another observation. And just so we don't lose what we have been saying about this so far, is that this T represents our treatment. Of course, we've got our observation here, the first one. And there's a second observation as well. All right, so let's go to our scenario to see if we can understand what's taking place. So Dr. A decides that he wants to compare his online research class next year to his face-to-face -face class. He decides to teach each class and give both of them the same final exam. So in other words, what's taking place here is that there's a need to see which class performs better. Or we could say, does the mode of the class lead to a different outcome? Now, You'll notice that right under the letter T here for our treatment, we have a blank space. And what I want to share with you is that just because we see this blank space doesn't mean there isn't anything happening. Now, what we typically do is we put something there as a placeholder to show that something is happening. And what we'll place here is the letter C. Now, this C stands for what we've talked about previously, this becomes our constant. So we'll list that here. So let's do what we've done before. Let's see if we can identify what each of these components would be as it pertains to this study. Now let's start by looking at the observation. I think we could agree on the fact that the observation here, because it's the same for both groups, is the final exam.
Now, let's look at kind of the next column over. Now, our treatment here usually, in general, represents something that's different or something that's new or unique. And let's say for this scenario that this online class that's mentioned is brand new. It's the first time that the class has been taught using this particular medium. So what we would do here is we would say that this treatment now would be represented as the online class. Now, our constant is the thing that we typically keep the same. It's kind of the traditional thing. And in this example, our traditional thing would be the face-to-face -face class. So that's what we have here now with the static group comparison. So you're probably wondering, okay, well, what's the difference? What makes this unique or what makes this special? Well, what makes this unique or special is the fact that this is now the first time that we have an opportunity to compare a treatment against something else. In the previous examples, all we did was be able to implement the treatment and get a result. But this time, we give it some competition to see if it really makes a difference or not. So, just as we've done before, let's try to pinpoint some of the things that make this unique. Uh, again, this is the first time that we have a comparison. So that's a good thing. We've got something to compare this to. Within one of the next videos is the fact that what makes this not so great of a study is the fact that we're really not sure who's being represented by each group. In other words, if we really wanted to be nitpicking, uh, the first group could be full of some of our most brilliant students, and the second group, our constant, could be full of our not as brilliant students. So again, what we'll say here is that we don't know the makeup of the groups. So again, that makes this study not as great as it could be. Now, there's something else. Um, we don't necessarily have an initial observation for each group. So remember, with our previous example, uh, we had kind of a first observation to see what people knew before taking the class. And so that made our study a little bit better than the original one-shot case study. But now we don't have that here. So that makes it so that this study isn't as great as it could be. So that wraps up our third study as it relates to pre-experimental designs. I hope this makes sense. Please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video on quasi-experimental designs.